A scene of mathematically represented geometry through points, lines, and triangles innately has infinite resolution. However, monitors don't. This means that the GPU's rasterizer needs to figure out how to turn these geometric primitives into actual pixels. The default is to choose whatever primitive lands in the middle of the pixel and set its color to that. This works, but sampling or seen once per pixel like this leads to a visual artifact called the jaggies, which makes edges look pretty terrible at angles. This is what's known as aliasing, which is when a signal is sampled at a rate different than what it was recorded at. In this case, we're dealing with undersampling since we're converting an infinitely high resolution scene to our screen's resolution. To remedy this, you could use super sampling anti-aliasing, which in the case of four samples per pixel would render the entire scene into a buffer four times the size of our window's dimensions. This large buffer would then be downsampled through some filtering function to return it to the right dimensions for swap chain presentation. The fragment shader needs to be ran for every fragment in the larger buffer as if it were the original image. This means that for a 1080p monitor, Rendering at full screen would mean the GPU needs to render for a 4K resolution target with the added cost of filtering afterwards. Multi-sampled anti-aliasing, or MSAA, is a much better solution, as it samples a pixel at multiple locations while only invoking the fragment shader once for each pixel, at least in most situations. In extreme cases, where each sample is covered by a unique primitive, the fragment shader would run once for each sample, but this is rare. Even this worst case, however, is a standard case in supersampling. With MSAA, color buffers need to be large enough to store enough samples per pixel. This allows the output color from the fragment shader to be shared between the samples that are covered by the primitive, which is needed for filtering the image for native resolution later. The fragment shader still chooses the center of the pixel to sample for the shared color value, it's just that it's only applied to the samples covering the primitive. Depth buffers must also be large enough to store multiple samples per pixel. However, depth testing occurs at each sample point, not the center of the pixel. This helps generate correct occlusion data. It's important to bring up that GPU hardware operates on 2x2 pixel quads, not individual pixels. This allows for derivative calculations between sample points for values like texture coordinates. As mentioned in NVIDIA's Life of a Triangle article, large differences between texture coordinates within a quad would mean using a different MIP map level compared to quads with smaller differences. The reason I bring this up is to draw attention to the case where calculating derivatives at pixel centers leads to errors. When samples are extrapolated to a pixel center that is not lying on a primitive, the fragment shader may be given a parameter that leads to undefined behavior, such as an invalid UV coordinate. Centroid sampling can mitigate this issue. When enabled, if a pixel center is not covered by a primitive, a sample that is covered will be used instead. This ensures that fragment shaders get valid parameters, but can also mean less accurate derivatives. To enable multi-sampling in Vulkan, first choose the number of samples you want but be sure to check your device's limit for this with the vkGetPhysicalDeviceProperties function. I'm using a class to handle pipeline creation, so I add a member variable in its definition that we'll use to configure multi-sampling. I also created a method to fill in the information for the structure, given a number of samples. Finally, I attach this variable to the vkGraphicsPipelineCreateInfo structure, which is used to create the finished pipeline. Now, we need to create an extra color attachment that holds enough space for all of our samples, which is four in our case. Our original render target will now act as the resolve image, or the attachment that will be the result of averaging down our large multi-sampled image. There's no need to create another depth attachment here, as it's only used by the large multi-sampled image in our case, and won't be resolved. It's important that when creating the multi-sampled color attachment to enable the VK image usage transient attachment bit to avoid writing it back to main memory. Only images that will be presented or needed for some future processing should be stored after rendering. Here are the internals of my create image function I use to make these attachments. The samples parameter gets passed into the VK image create info struct after the appropriate cast. This function returns an allocated image struct that bundles together some metadata about the image along with a VMA allocation field since I'm using AMD's Vulkan memory allocator. I'm using Vulkan 1.3's dynamic rendering, which means a VK rendering info struct needs to be filled in with two VK rendering attachment infos for the color and depth images. I do this during initialization in the configure render resources method of my VK backend class. I have two helper functions for the attachments, but I'll focus on the color attachment creation as a depth attachment will be created the same way as in single sampled rendering. You'll notice that with MSAA, we need to fill in three fields regarding the resolution of our multi-sampled image to our resolve image. We pass in the image view handle, the layout it will be in during rendering, as well as the filter function. I went with the simple average. I also have another helper function that fills in our VK rendering infostruct, 
with these two attachments. You might have noticed that I passed VK attachment store op don't care for both store operations. This will tell the driver that we don't need to explicitly store these multi-sampled attachments after rendering, as the result will be resolved into the resolve image anyway. This saves on unnecessary work that would incur from moving these buffers around in memory. We store our rendering info in a member variable that we eventually pass into VK command begin rendering. Here's a scene rendered at one sample per pixel. It looks mostly fine, but edges appear pretty jagged. I'm rendering this on a 1440p monitor, but the effects would be even worse on lower resolutions. After enabling multi-sampling at four samples per pixel, our scene looks much better. Edges are a lot smoother with a relatively low increase in computational costs. It's even common to find multi-sampling used on mobile hardware, which usually has much tighter constraints than desktop GPUs. Hopefully this helps you guys navigate multi-sampling in your own Vulkan renders. Thanks.